mine. Joy is mine. Victory today is mine. Good morning to all of you that are listening on this. This is the Higher Ground Outreach Church of God in Christ. We're coming to you live here from our sanctuary located at 132 Bank Street Amen. right here in the city of Suffolk, Virginia. And we're yet shouting the victory. We're yet yes. shouting the joy of the Holy Ghost is mine. Victory and happiness is mine. Yes. We are happy with yes. joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. And we're so thankful and so grateful for the hand of the Lord being upon our lives. Lord, God yes. has brought us from a mighty long way. Yes. And we are so grateful and so thankful just to be in the house of the Lord today. Yes. David yes. said, I was glad when they said unto me, yes. let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes. Lord. Now feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Yes, Hallelujah. We are grateful just to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord blessed us with a beautiful day. Yes. Amen. Yes. It might be hot on the outside, but God, yes. God knows God is on the inside. Yes. And we are yet rejoicing Glory. in the God of our salvation. Yes. We ask that you will continue to like and to share as we go forth in our service on today. Yes. I don't know about you, but I'm expecting God to do and work yes. immediately. Yes. We are praying for you. Yes. Praying for our loved ones, our sons and daughters. And there's so much that is happening around us. But I thank God for the victory. God has already given us the victory. And we magnify it today. Our sons and daughters, of course, the enemy wants to destroy them. But I'm encouraged today that all of our young people are not going to hell in a handbag. I believe it. I'm expecting it. I don't know about you. But God's going to save. God's going to deliver. God's going to set free. And only he can. So I'm grateful today. Lord, that God is already, and I don't be surprised when it happens. Amen. And I'm just expecting, I'm living in that expectation. Amen. Today is our Women's Day, of course, and we celebrate with our women, our female constituents that are here in the ministry. I'm going to ask my wife if she would come and lead us forth in prayer on this morning. The Bible says call for the cunning women Amen. and the call for the mourning women and yes. let them pray. Yes. There's no prayer like a mother's prayer. Amen. I thank God for the fathers. <laughs> And I tell you, it's not, I tell you, there's something about God's little girl that's yeah. special to the heart of any father yeah. that when his daughter cries or when, they're, when they're, they're, these young babies cry out to yeah. them, they yes, respond Lord, yes, in Lord. kind. Yes. Meaning when they call and ask yes. God for help, yes. help is on the way. Yes. So I praise God for that. Sister, yes. uh, First Lady of Evangelist Missionary Irma Carter is going to yes. come and she's going to lead us forth in our word of prayer and we'll be back with the furtherance of the service. Let's say amen for her as she comes. Amen. We thank you now. We bless your holy name. We give you the 
and minds would receive our scripture reading on this morning and that it's coming from none other than missionary Ordinia Lassiter. She's going to read our scripture and we'll be back with the furtherance of the service. Let's say amen for her. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you this morning. If you have your Bible, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Romans the 10th chapter, very familiar passage, verse 9 and 10. And it reads, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yeah. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yeah. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 Let's thank God for the word on this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. What a blessing. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're certainly grateful for all of you that have come out this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. How many of you are really looking forward for what God has for you Amen. in this second quarter? 
in the second half. And I tell you, as we look now, we've passed six months of this present year, and we're moving yeah. to the second quarter. Yeah. And anytime, if you know anything about sports, in that last quarter, that's when you got to put on the juice. Yes, over there, because it's about time that you're over and done with. But I know God is not through with us yet. Right. And I know right. that now is the time that we've broken down and get ready for what God has yeah. in store for us. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to it. Hallelujah. We're giving him praise in advance. We're thanking him for what he's going to do. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm thankful for how the Lord has brought us here. Somebody thought that you wouldn't be here today. But you can put your hand on yourself. Say, I'm still here. Good God Almighty. By the grace and the mercy of God. Nobody but God. Nobody. Hallelujah. Nobody but God. Lord, hallelujah, through sickness, through many dangers, seen and unseen, God brought us. Thank God for the Holy Ghost and thank God for his brother. He has not forgotten about you, but he's been there all the time. Hallelujah, we're yet proclaiming victory in Jesus. Hallelujah, he's our savior forever. I ask that you will continue to like and to share as we go forth in the service on this morning. The Lord has brought us and has kept us one more time. And yes. We're just grateful and thankful and for those of you that continue to listen to us each and every Sunday morning as we're able to come before you as with our morning service, yes. of course. And we'd like to invite you to any and all of our services here at the church. We're yes. located at 132 Bank Street right yes. here in the city of Suffolk, Virginia. Yes. Uh, right downtown. You can't miss us right behind the courthouse. Amen. Amen. And we're just thankful and grateful for the opportunity God has afforded us yeah. to yet lift up the standard yeah. of holiness yeah. in this yeah. last day. Yeah. Somebody got to tell the story. Yeah. So we praise God for you. So come and be a part of our morning service, our worship. Yeah. Our Sunday school begins at 9 o'clock a.m. And yes, we still have Sunday school. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And it is a teaching arm of our church and it, it has been a mainstay down through the years. And yeah. I thank God for the Sunday school. Yeah. And the Sunday school is marching on. Right. Yeah. Thank God for our morning worship uh, service at 1030. Yeah. You're allowed to come and be a part of our morning worship service. And we invite all of our friends and loved ones and the courts to come and be a part in the sanctuary and to gather together in corporate worship. And that's what we do. And it's good when brothers and behold how good and how pleasant yeah. it is for brethren right. to dwell together that's in right. unity. That's we right. can come yeah. and be a part of the oil that God is pouring out in a corporate way yeah. on the sanctuary. It is like even like the oil that ran down from the beard, yeah. even Aaron's oh, beard, yeah. that ran down yeah. even to the skirts of yeah. his garment. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for, our yeah. own yeah. town. Yeah. I'm looking for an overflow yeah. of the oil of God, the breath of God in the sanctuary. Yeah. Hallelujah! We are looking and expecting God to show up on our behalf. We've got so much to thank the Lord for. God has done great things for us. We're, uh, we're glad. And we do continue our services throughout the week on our Tuesday and Friday sessions at 12 noon. We have our intercessory prayer uh, that is being aired. Of course, you can tune right into us by going to our website. And that website address is www.hgocogic.com. And you can tune right in at the 12 noon hour. The, I guess, the access code or whatever it is, the ID, pass ID is right there. So you can tune right in. And we've been having a wonderful time. I'm able to yes. join in with them yes. uh, from time to time. But the mothers and the sisters and the brothers are praying yes. and bringing yes. results. And I yes. think that's really what prayer is about. Yes. We are talking to God and God speaks back to us. And he responds in kind yes. with healings and with deliverance and breakthrough. Yes. Uh, we are praying in particular for our sons and our daughters yes. uh, that seem to be under a vicious attack of the enemy. Yes. But we've been praying yes. this morning, even yes. in the Sunday school, yes. praying for our sons yes. and praying for our sisters. Yes. We're sending the SOS signal up. Yes. Save our sons. Yes. Save our sisters. Yes. Save our children. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I believe God. Yes. I believe God. Yes. I believe God. Yes. He come to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that much more abundantly. So we believe in God that even now when it doesn't seem like there is hope and seem like they just want to go to hell anyhow, God's going to intervene for these praying mothers. And God's not going to let your prayers be in vain for these praying fathers. For these praying church members that are praying as a family that's united together, yes. knowing that we are part of a greater community. 
of believers, and we thank God for just being in our midst. Amen. So keep that in mind as you yes. come and join yes. us on those Tuesdays at 12 noon and on Fridays at 12 noon. We believe in God's going to hear and answer your prayer. Make your request known unto God. Yes. The Bible says he will hear and answer our prayer. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. And we got our Tuesday night Bible sessions that we try to be a part of, of course, at each and every Tuesday night. Uh, we didn't have it last Tuesday, but we're back on back on it again this Tuesday at 7.30 at the same website address. And that is www.hdocogic.com. Join right in with us, and we'd be glad to have you. And invite your friends, invite yes. your loved ones. Yes. Amen. Yes. We're not going to put you on the spot. Amen. But we're going to make sure that you hear what thus saith the Lord yes. during that time of sharing with each other. And we ask that you'll that are yet for sharing with us by way of, of um, a monetary gifts. We appreciate each and every monetary gift, whether large or small. And we praise God for those of the persons that have been consistently paying their time. Yes. 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 So members plus money does equal ministry. If we're able to carry on uh, with your help and with your support. And we've been praying, and God knows that is my sincere desire, that we would get on that bandwagon and know that it is important. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And it didn't say that they're going to come from out of the sky, but it says that men give. Yeah. Uh, God will make a way yeah. for you. He'll give you an unexpected Woo! blessing. He'll see you with the money in the mail. Oh, yeah. Glory to yeah. God. <laughs> God will do it. I'm a witness he'll do it. He's done it for me. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm expecting him to do it. He provides for us. And he causes us to meet our obligations yeah. and our responsibilities yeah. because we honor him. Yeah. The Bible says, honor the Lord with thy yes. substance, yes. so shall thy barns be filled, yes. and they will yes. burst out with fatness. Yes. So we believe in God's yes. word is true, yes. and we're standing on the promises of yes. God. Right. So be with us on the Tuesday night, of course, and then on Sunday morning at 1030, we're here in the sanctuary. We yes. thank God for this, this privilege, of course, a birthday month of July, yes. and we thank God for all of our Hallelujah. July babies. Amen. And I have a list somewhere. I don't know what I did with it, but I thank God for uh, Dr. Jordan. I thank yes. her. It's on the 11th of yes. July. Yes. Amen. And God bless her. Amen. And Brother Travis Gordon is, I think, is on the 15th. Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Brother Travis. And I heard on Mother Shirley Jefferson on the 16th of July. Amen. And we are celebrating with them. And that's what we do here at Higher Ground. We celebrate uh, people, but we don't forget you and realizing that if you didn't have a birthday, it could have been a very uh, another way. But God allowed you to see it. We're so glad that he has allowed us to see another day. And with our help and strength. And what a blessing it is. And as we grow older, we understand that it is the hand of God upon our lives that we're able to move and live and have our being. So we don't take those things for granted. And as we were praying this morning, I said, God, help us not to take the small yes. thing for granted. Right. I heard him talking in the Sunday school and saying that, well, I woke, I woke up and then I got up. Because a lot yes. of folks was waking up, or waking up, but they're not getting up. Yes. So if you were able to wake up and get up, you are among the blessed people this morning. God has allowed us to get up and to represent. So we're praying that the Lord will continue to bless you uh, and enrich your lives as we move forward in this season. We want to remind everybody that this month is a month of convocation for us at yes. the second jurisdiction of North Carolina the second, and we're going to be in our convocation on the 18th of July, which is a week after next, I believe. Uh, we're going to be set, uh, there in Greensboro at the Evangel Temple uh, Church of God in Christ. We encourage you to go and be a part of the services. Uh, they have some very special guests, guests online for us. Uh, uh, many persons that the Lord has blessed, uh, our very own Bishop, Bishop Timothy Powell, yes. and our very own Mother Supervisor, uh, Patricia David Lofton, who's going to yes. be there, along with our special guests. And I just want to expose the people of God to the presence of God in the yes. midst yes. of the congregations yes. as they come together to praise and to magnify God. I would just thank God for just the people of God coming together. Yeah. And when we can come together and get on one accord yeah. and get with the cord, right. you'll be surprised at what the Lord will do. And yeah. I've heard testimonies of deliverance yeah. of people that have been healed physically yeah. Yeah. and mentally of most emotional yeah. distress yeah. Yeah. because yeah. they came and got in the flow. Yeah. They came and got in the midst of where God was moving yeah. by his spirit. Yeah. And when you get in the flow, when it rained, it rained on everybody. Y'all yeah. know that, right? Yeah. 
It's not specific to anyone as you walk out in the rain. Hallelujah. You're going to get wet if you're in the rain. Then it's not going to miss you. Amen. And I say, God, don't miss me. Whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, don't do it without me. And I want the presence of God. I want the Lord to touch me as I move in this season. So be in the service. If you're able to come, be a part of the convocation. If you're able to come and be a part of our worship services this month. And we appreciate each and every one of you and ask that the Lord will bless you and give you the desires of your heart. I'm going to ask you to stand a few moments and we're going to pray. God's blessing upon you as we share with you from the word of the Lord on this morning. God is up to something and I believe that I was hearing portions of the angels ceremonies on this past week. God knows yeah. the Lord blessed and met them in Indianapolis. Yeah. Uh, so we say, God, don't be surprised when God starts blessing me. Right. Don't be surprised when you see God's blessings unfolding upon my life. Don't be surprised when you see me coming out with my hands up. Hallelujah. Don't be surprised. Hallelujah. When you see me shouting and dancing because I've got the victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm expecting God to do exactly what we asked him to do. I, I, won't be like, I won't be like Rhoda that had come to the door as they're praying for Peter and didn't understand that their prayer had already been answered. And here he is at the door. They're praying for God to release upon his life. And there God answered their prayer. But it's good to just keep on praying. Somebody told us they keep on praying. Uh, the Lord is now. Keep on praying. He'll hear your cry. God will promise and his word is true. Just keep on praying. Come on, Jesus. Tell somebody, keep on praying. Keep on praying. He'll answer you. That's what he does. Hallelujah. 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 God will hear your cry. And he will answer by and by. Bless his name. Bless his name. Father, we bless you. We thank you today. Glory to God for this opportunity and this privilege to come before you one more time. And God, we're grateful. Hallelujah. For what you've already done. God, we thank you for your mercy. How you spared us one more time. God, you didn't allow the enemy to, to destroy us. You didn't allow death to invade our ranks. God, you spared us. And we're grateful, God, for another opportunity, another privilege that you were, hallelujah, afforded us to give you the praise. God, help us to come with a thankful heart, with a heart to receive what you have for us even on the day. God, we don't come with a complaint. We come with thanksgiving on our hearts. Glory to God, we come thanking you for what you've already done. Thank you, Lord. Bless this people now. In the name of Jesus, help us to realize that thank you, make room for more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for saving our sons. Thank you for saving our daughters. Thank you for saving our sisters. God, thank you for saving our mothers and fathers. Thank you. Oh. It's not too late. It's not too late. And God, we appreciate what you've done. Help us to face the challenges, oh God, with faith and assurance. Give us the confidence that if we ask anything according to your will, you hear with us. God, that's your word. And we're repeating your word back to you. And it causes faith to, in, to activate on our behalf. To know that God, if you've done it before, you can do it again. Do it again, God. Oh, thank you. Do it again. Manifest yourself. To God. Manifest yourself, God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your fresh wind, your anointing that sweeps through this house. Do it for your glory. God, we won't take any of your credit, but God will tell men that you did. You will wonder in our soul and we love you and we appreciate what you're doing. Bless these families and hear the prayer of these little ones. Lord, let their words fall to the ground. But God, manifest and do that which you can only you can do. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you. We declare it that it is so. And so it is. In Jesus' name. Come and give the Lord a praise of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's just good to be here. Uh, and I'm still saying I'd rather be in God's house uh, than in the best hospital in the world. 
because in God's house there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, at his right hand, there's brethren evermore. God's house is different from our house. I appreciate the house. Amen. But I appreciate God's house even more. Uh, we talked about the return of the Israelites, of the exile, and how yeah. happy and rejoicing that they were to be able to get back to their homeland and get back yeah. into the temple to repair the breaches yeah. and repair the walls of Jerusalem. Yeah. It was a time of rejoicing. Yeah. And I believe that even now in our post-pandemic state, that it ought to be a time of rejoicing for yeah. us as we come back and are able to gather with our brothers and sisters and not without precaution, but we're praying with precaution, yes, knowing that it's really not over yet in that respect, but we believe that God brought us through already and he'll continue. Him and say, he's going to continue to watch over us. That's my faith. That's my confidence, Mother yeah. Jefferson. I'm yeah. believing in God. You brought me through that, and I've been yeah. exposed to a lot of things uh -huh. and could have very easily have been succumbed to those yeah. uh, external circumstances. Yeah. But God brought me. Good yeah. God Almighty. Yeah. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Yeah. Glory to God, because sometimes folk don't tell the whole truth. Yeah. Sometimes folk will sink around you, and they're just going on like everything is hunky dory. Yeah. But God even protect us. And I believe that the scripture is correct and say, if we drink any deadly thing, yeah. it shall not harm us. Yeah. Not saying that we're looking to drink strychnine and drink arsenic. We're not trying to do none of that. But just in case, look at somebody and say, just in case, yeah. you run up on something yeah. that could be detrimental to your physical health, yeah. God has a way of protecting yeah. us. I'm reminded of the thing that Paul endured as he had already been shipwrecked. I'm going to speak in a few moments, but I'm just sharing with you some things to encourage your heart. Even after, after having survived the shipwreck, he's landing on an island, and he's even trying to warm himself. And while he's trying to warm himself in the fire, out comes a viper from the bushes and from the threshold that was used to fuel the fire. And it latches on Paul's head, and Paul shakes it off. Look at somebody and say, some things you just got to shake off. Look at all the villainous beast that grabbed a hold of his rib. And they looked on him as if he was to swell up and die. But instead of swelling up, he continued to go right on. And they begin to want to worship Paul because they say he must be a god. That even now death couldn't take it. But God is with him. Hallelujah. If God be for you, come on somebody, to help me here. If God be for you. He's more than the world against you. God Almighty and Paul was able to survive that circumstance and keep on going for the purpose of what God was sending him to, to Rome. So don't stop, don't stop because you went into an obstacle. Don't stop because you went into an extreme circumstance. Tell somebody, keep on going. Keep on going. Don't let that stop because that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to stop. And the very first obstacle we face, we want to turn around and go back. Uh, I, I'm reminded about the fact we live in an area that is loaded with tunnels. And I've used this analogy many times, and we have some very intimidating tunnels on this side of the world, on this side of, of, of eastern, uh, eastern United States, and one in particular, the Bay Bridge Tunnel, is very intimidating for a lot of people. And I've heard people yeah. testimony, and they want to go to New York, and they want to go on the Route 13, but in in order to get to Route 13 from our part of this Virginia coast, you've got to go across the Bay Bridge Tunnel. And they get to the Bay Bridge Tunnel, and because it is so intimidating, 23 miles long, that they got to go under the water and up out of the water and down the water. Many folks turn around and go back. But look at somebody and say, there's no time to turn around now. If you're going to get to New York, <laughs> you got to go through the tunnel. If you're going that way, so if you're going to go to heaven, you can't turn around now. Somebody said, I come too close to turn around. I come too far to give up now. Glory to God. So you just close your eyes and God be with you. And you can make it if you try. Come on, give the Lord a praise. You can make it. And you sometimes we make things larger than they really are. And we amplify those things up to the point we will get intimidated and we talk ourselves out of our blessing. Yes. But I just want to give you a game plan today for uh -huh. facing some extreme circumstances. Right. Help me say a game plan. A game plan. For facing, for facing extreme, circumstances. extreme circumstances. 
And I'm in the book of Romans, and I'll be reading from the in New International Version, that the eighth chapter of the book of Romans in verse 35 through 39, and we all have faced some very extreme circumstances. It may have been a financial crisis. It may have been a medical uh, situation that it seemed that it was not going to get any better. And that in itself uh, designate that that is something that is out of the ordinary. God wants us to be healed. He wants us to be delivered and set free. But because we're human, sometimes we fall victim to the vicissitudes of life and things that come just because we're human. Right. And as we look at Romans, the 8th chapter, Paul must have had this in mind as he tried to encourage the people of God in uh, the 8th chapter, verse 35 through 39. And he says, who will separate us from the love of God Christ? Now, this is the New International Version. Will tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered, but in all things we are overcomingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced, tell somebody, I am convinced, I am convinced that neither death, neither death nor life, right. nor angels, right. nor principalities, right. nor things present, nor things to come, right. nor powers, right. nor height, uh -huh. nor depth, yeah. nor any other created thing shall or will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus, our Lord. Yes. Look at somebody and say, don't let nothing separate you. Don't let nothing separate you. There is a lot of things that can come upon us, and no believer should think it's strange if he or she experiencing adversity, yes. persecution, if you experience hunger yes. or poverty or peril. We do go through these things from time to time, and we appreciate it when God brings us out. Amen. And trouble and calamity do not necessarily mean that God has deserted us. And I want y'all to know that because sometimes when adverse circumstances come yeah. upon us, we are automatically, the devil say, the Lord has forsaken you. He's not thinking about you. Why would he allow this to happen to you if he really loved you? Maybe the devil don't talk to y'all like that. Maybe you don't, you be able to get through that. You've heard that before and you just rebuke him and put him in his plate. But there are times when it seems like living with life in itself sometimes can leave you speechless. Yes. And you don't know what to say. Yes, sir. Anybody ever been in a situation yes, like that? Yes. So, Lord, why did you allow? We don't really want to ask them, but in the back of our mind, yes. we're saying, what is going on? Teach, Pastor. What Teach. in the world? Yes. Yes. What is going on? Yes. Lord, I love you and I, yes. I thank you and I've yes. been doing all I can. Yes. And how could you? How yes. could you? Hallelujah. Allow this to come upon me. Job said the thing that I feared most has come upon me. Here it is, right facing us. And we're faced with those particular challenges. So all of us has caused and have been in some type of calamity or some type of trouble. But it does not mean that God has deserted us. That just might be the path that God is using to get you to the place that he needs you to be. And sometimes there's a role of adversity. If we look at the life of Joseph, we can really trace and see God moving in the midst of him having his, had his dream and seeing the 11 stars and the uh, moon and the sun bowing down to him. And sometimes you got to keep your dream to yourself. Because you can't tell everybody everything. Amen. And a lot of times the enemy doesn't really know what's going on and with you and around you until you tell him. Right. So look at somebody and say, don't talk too much. Don't talk too much. Some stuff you need to keep to yourself. Yeah. If God has revealed a certain thing to you and he has not given you to publicly announce it, and definitely don't put it on Facebook. Amen. Amen. Folks put their whole life on the Facebook. If you really want to know what's happening, all you got to do is go to Facebook. Because we want to chronicle everything that happened to you. I don't care what you're eating. <laughs> I'm getting off y'all paper. Let me stay on. Let me stay focused. But I'm just saying, oh, you don't care. What I mean. Do you care? Amen. But we have a tendency to want to public, publicly announce these things. Uh, so, but we don't have to do that. We don't have to telegraph. And please don't tell nobody that you're not home. 
And that is how yeah. people get robbed. They said, well, they gone. They done told us they in the Bahamas and they in the cool breeze. Let's go visit their home now. Now would be the opportune time to go because nobody's home. And the thief cometh at those times. You break up your home. And when you have announced that you're not there, you give them a classic opportunity and invitation to come on back. Y'all don't give me this one. Amen. So be very careful of how and what you tell about your life and your dreams. So as we look at this particular segment that Paul gives us, quite the contrary, our afflictions, our suffering as believers will open up the means by which we experience more of God's love and God's comfort. The Apostle Paul goes on to say in 2 Corinthians, uh, the first chapter, verses 4 through 5, who comforted us in our, all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble. So God allows you to go through trouble and brings you out so that when the opportunity presents itself and someone comes to you with their issue, you can say, if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. And if God is no respecter of persons, he does not withhold that from us when it is our opportunity to give it and comfort our heart. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are com comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Yes. Because Jesus suffered and went through and was persecuted. And he says, if I have overcome, you also shall overcome. It, God doesn't do these things to destroy you, but he's doing it to strengthen you and to amen. comfort your heart. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Now, the Greek word for comfort, this parakletos, means to stand beside a person, encouraging and helping him in times of trouble. And I've seen it so often times that we are praying for our brothers and praying for our sisters, and we just need somebody to stand with us. There was a time that when we would come to the altar, uh, we're back in the uh, back in the day somewhat, there were always somebody beside us. And we should come to the point because we want our sisters and brothers delivered, you might just have to accompany them. Because the enemy may have made an attack on their minds. So you're going out there by yourself, you're going to be embarrassed, you're ashamed. But I say when it comes down to deliverance, I don't care who watches, you don't know my situation, you don't know my circumstance. And if I know I need help, I need to come to get the help that I need. Somebody ought to say amen. But it would help oftentimes that we would have the compassion and the consideration and the sensitivity for our brothers and sisters that are not as maybe as open or might not as you know want bold enough and have the courage enough to come to get the help that they need. So when I read that particular, it says that you go and stand beside a person, encouraging and helping him or her in time of trouble. God supremely fulfills this role. For us, that is what the Holy Ghost does. He is our what? Comforter. Yes. He comes beside us. Not only is he in us, but he's around us. Yes. This is the Holy Ghost's dispensation. Yes. This is where he's most shining. He's most seen in the moving of his presence and in the spirit, even in the earth. Uh -huh. Because most of us have a testimony of time and time again how that the Holy Ghost comforted us in our time of yes. need. We just must determine to not allow time. Let me say, don't allow time, don't allow time. Or, the time or the passing of time to terminate your testimony. Terminate your testimony. Don't allow time to terminate your testimony. Amen. I put all those teams together for emphasis that sometime over time, because God doesn't move when we think he ought to move, uh -huh. we have will have a tendency to terminate. That means to cancel out what God already has done for you. So don't allow the passing of time. Sometimes God allows us to go through that just for it to endure. If you endure hardness as a good soldier, there is a blessing in store for you. For a soldier that goes out and experiences uh, gunfire, he can't throw his gun away and run and retreat. <laughs> Somebody got to fight, amen? amen? And oftentimes we're the one, we're on the front lines when it comes down to this warfare by which we face. Amen. But God is there to comfort us. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. So don't allow the passing of time to terminate your testimony. In this season we are in right now that we're experiencing, we must keep on rowing and toiling regardless of the contrary winds that we face. So when we look at it, I'm convinced 
that there are at least three essential things, of course, that we must talk about when it comes to fulfilling, having a fulfilling life. That has been my emphasis for the last few months to show you how to be a better you and how even though we're saved and sanctified and baptized, we still sometimes live beneath our privilege Amen. because we don't really know what God has for us. Amen. And when you don't know that there is something that God has for you, then you oftentimes won't take into account, even as Esau right. didn't understand or didn't appreciate his birthright and gave it up for a pot of beans. Yes. So tell somebody your birthright, your birthright is, worth more is worth more than a pot of beans. Than a pot of beans. All he had was a bad day. And he gave up his birthright. And he sought it after he realized that he had made the mistake. He sought it carefully with tears. But God says, you already made that choice. And Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I not preferred. Can I use that expression? He said hate. He said hate it, but we have another connotation with hate. But we got a whole lot of haters. Oh, yes. Don't we? Amen. Amen. <laughs> I heard somebody say, it doesn't matter about your haters. Use your haters as elevators. That's what it says. Amen. So when you know you got, how many of y'all got it? No, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. But we all have somebody that does not necessarily speak well of us. Amen. And maybe feel like you don't deserve what it is that you may be enjoying at this point in your life. Amen. But that's not up to them. Amen. God has a way of, 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 of verifying what he's done and giving you the credibility to stand in your rightful place and to represent him in a fulfilled life. Right. Let me give you these three things real quickly. First thing, a clear sense of personal identity. You gotta know who you are. Amen. And I always say that you gotta learn how to be comfortable in the skin that you're in. Yes. You will be surprised at the number of persons that envy other persons and they look at their life, but you don't know what it took for them to get to where they are. And they may not be living in the same type of life that you really intended, but it looks beautiful from the outside. But are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to do the work and put in the work that it took for them to get to where they are? So you've got to be careful with your identity. Have a clear sense of who you are. Paul recognized who he was in Christ Jesus. All right. Hallelujah. Jacob recognized who he was. And he stood on that after having even done it through substantility. Still in the birthright of his elder brother because Esau came out first. But he wanted it so badly yes. till he was willing to deny and to do chicanery to get the blessing that he felt like his elder brother was going to get. Amen. We're not telling you to do no tricks. That's but we right. do ask you that you want it because the birthright is important. Right. Who we are in Christ Jesus is important. Uh -huh. And when you don't know that, the devil will run you up on a snag. Uh -huh. But when you know who you are, have a clear sense of personal identity. All right. Over the years, I've observed that people who know who they are, who possess a clear sense of their mission, and who understand God's plan and purpose for their lives are people who experience genuine fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always mean money. Right. But you can have a whole lot of money and still not be fulfilled. Amen. You can have a barrel of money and still be the most unhappiest person Amen. in the world. So that's not that hurt to have money. Don't miss, don't that's get this right. misconstrued. Right. Right. I tried poor, I don't like poor. Yeah. Amen. But yeah. there are persons that have money and still are unfulfilled. Right. So they don't realize that they don't have the genuine fulfillment. And that's why people seek out other means of drugs and other uh, um, mood altering things that, come, that carry them out of who they really are. Uh -huh. They want to be somebody else, but be who God made you to be. Amen. 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 That does not mean that they don't face extreme circumstances. Mm -hmm. Rather, it means they have learned or figured out how to face those challenges in ways that transform those obstacles into opportunity. Mm -hmm. So write this down. Learn how to transform obstacles okay. into opportunities. I'm talking to the saints now. Amen. Because many times we've had opportunities, and but when the obstacle arises, we have a tendency to abandon what we know God had already told us to do. Uh -huh. If the story was really told of many persons, then they don't necessarily have to be saved persons that have continued to trust the Lord, even though they face some obstacles. And they got many examples. And even in the secular world, Abraham Lincoln tried to be president for 17 times. Amen. After the first time, he's like, <laughs> that's it. But who continues to do that? 
after all these many times, the person that had to try the formula of the 409 okay. spray that we use to clean up our house and clean up, that was the 409th time wow. that he had experience with the cleaner. That's why we call it 409. Y'all do the research. After the first time, we say, you know what? This ain't for me. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. So when it comes down to our Christian experience, why do we want to give up so quickly when we don't see our prayers answered? Do you know who you are? You must don't realize that the promises of God are yea and amen. I thought I'd get a help right there. The promises that God has made you are still yea and amen. It may not happen on the timetable that you and I think, but it's going to happen. And guess what? I heard the song the other day. I'm, you're going to live to see it happen. Anybody got that kind of issue? You're going to live to see it happen. Yes. You don't have to be dead in order for that to come to pass. It can happen in your lifetime. Yes. But you've got to have a game plan right. for your facing your extreme circumstances. You don't want to just be able to just give up so quickly when you're facing obstacles. So transform obstacles into opportunities. Use them as platforms. Hallelujah to glory carry to the next dimension of the next phase of your life. Rather than stumbling over them, they press on through them. Look at those inventors and all of those persons that have made a contribution and an impact in our society. You'll be surprised. And we don't put that on our resume, do we? All of the failures and all of the disappointment. But really, that's really what makes us. And not that you got to have a whole lot of them, but sometimes we keep on trying and we keep on pressing it until we get it right. Amen. So tell your neighbor, keep on pressing. Keep on pressing. Till you get it right. Till you get it right. I'm going to get it right this time. Because if you don't pass the test, you got to take it over again. Take it right. And if that is you, then you are pressing on through certain circumstances or obstacles because you have a focus on who you are, what you're called to do, and how your particular circumstance fits into God's greater purpose for your life. That has to do with destiny. I won't read the rest of this passage of Romans 8, but y'all can read it when you get an opportunity. But I say often that obstacles are those frightful things that you see when you take your eyes off of your goal. And when you take your, and I think about the fact of Peter walking on the water. Peter was doing okay, y'all. What? Y'all getting real quiet on me here. He was doing okay. He said, Lord, if it's you, then bid me to come. And nobody gave Peter credit for walking. That's right. But they criticized people. But that guy actually walked on water. Yes. I was like, who does that? <laughs> but because his faith was so strong, he said, Lord, if it's you, y'all read it. Yes. Bid me to come. And when he saw the winds being boisterous and contrary, he took his eyes off Jesus. And y'all know the rest of the story. Yes. He began to sink. So this is another thing we need to keep you in mind. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Because folk will mess you up. Yeah, get you all focused. When we think about what they're doing and how they're doing it. But if you keep your eyes on him and give him thing, not the obstacles, but that you're facing, but the things that by which you want to keep your focus straight on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. That does not take away the reality that some do exist. Y'all with me? Amen. And I'm not trying to live in a, a superficial life that these things really don't, they're not real. But yes, some things are very real. Amen. And some Amen. obstacles are right there flat in your face. Amen. And if you're not careful, it'll cause you to back up on the promise that God has made you. All right, all right. Tell somebody, don't back up now. Don't back up now. It's too late in the game. <laughs> But you are so affixed to what you are doing until you hardly notice any distraction. Right. I people have seen people that walk across the tightrope, and that was not what the Lord called me to do. But I see them being so focused and with the balancing pole, but I on you know, thin wire, that was not really what I had envisioned as keeping. But you gotta have extreme focus to walk the tight wire. You gotta have extreme focus just to make it to the other side. The, all it takes is a, is a contrary, a rough wind. All that it takes is a distraction. So you got to be keenly focused on where you're trying to go. Amen. So Amen. use that. So you got to stick to something. If you don't affix to it, to affix means to attach to or to stick to something. Uh huh. Like a stamp to a letter. Yes. Like a bird to its feathers. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you cannot separate them, can you? Amen. So we make the choice every day to stick with something or to let it go. And I am convinced that our best attitudes emerge out of a clear understanding of your own identity. When you know who you are, uh, a clear sense of your divine mission, know what God has called you to do, and a deep sense of God's purpose for our lives. And we've got some things on, um, I got some things on the table, so to speak, for what I'm asking God to do for us. And I'm saying, God, help me to keep my focus. Help, say, keep me humble. I don't want to get the big head and I don't want to lose my focus. Because sometimes when God begins to bless some folk, they lose their focus. Yes. And they don't really know how to handle the temporary or the small successes that are coming their way. Yeah. I've seen people as they're moving forward, they, they lose it. And they just testified last week. And before you know it, they're doing everything yeah. the next week. So learn how to stay in step with God. Right. Don't do not move ahead of him. Uh -huh. And sometimes we can disqualify ourselves in the process. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen. But you got to know who you are and who you are. The Apostle Paul had this type of remarkable attitude. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. He consistently maintained this throughout his ministry. I don't see Paul backing up. He's put over the wall. They're trying to kill him. He had to escape for his life in a basket. But that didn't say, you know what? These folks are so mean. I'm thinking about them. I'm going to stop preaching. I'm going to go home and make my tents. But he kept right on preaching. He kept right on coming back. We see him going down to Lystra and to Iconium. And he was beaten with rods in Iconium. He was stoned in Lystra. Look at the determination. If they done beat me with the rocks, guess what, Brocavis? I'm going home. Uh, yeah. As we say, I'm going to the house. Yeah. It doesn't take all this. But Paul continued to press his way. Amen. He continued to press. They left him for dead yes. out yes. in Lystra. Yes. But instead of dying, he became an astronaut. Yes. He took off for heaven and saw things which was unlawful for a man to see and to speak about. God took him up into the third heaven. Y'all not hear me this morning. He laying down there. They think he's dead. But Paul and left had an out of body experience. Yes. And goes up to heaven and see things and, and realize that that third heaven is where God lives. Came back with the report and God blessed him and be able to share with those other brethren. He gets up and walks back into the city and guess what? Start preaching again. All right. He's a right. bad brother. <laughs> but he was what? Focus. Hallelujah. But that's his testimony. And I'm saying if Paul could do it, you and I can do it too. We need a reliable game plan for facing extreme circumstances. And we've got to learn to trust God and to accept his plan. Shipwreck. In the night, a day and a night in the deep. I can go down and talk about the things that by which amongst false brethren and how he deal, dealt with that sense of insecurity for a period of time, but he kept right on going because he had a game plan to see it. He got to the end of the life and said, I have fought a good life. I kept the faith. I finished my course. And now, y'all have to say now. I'm getting happy up here now. Getting happy. And now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord shall give to all those that love his appearing. Amen. That was Paul's focus. Yeah. He said, I got a prize. I got to get my crown. And I try to keep that in mind as I move forward. Lord, I got to get my crown. Glory to God. So that is what we and you and I have to stick to. Now, he had a reliable game plan for facing these circumstances. Now, in the book of Acts, and I just want you to turn to the 13th chapter real quickly, and I'm just about done, praise the Lord, but in that 13th chapter, Paul gives us, through his responses to some extreme circumstances, how to make some mature responses. Because as we grow older, we don't really lose our mind and overreact when extreme circumstances come. That's right. Now here come Paul, and I'm talking about him this morning because he gives us a good uh, example of how to press on in the midst of extreme circumstances. Mm -hmm. So in that 13th chapter, and I won't read it in its entirety, but now when they were church that were in Antioch, certain prophets and teachers and talks about Barnabas and Niger and Simon, of course, and then Lucius of Serene and Maenon, and which had been brought up from Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. These persons got together 
And now they're about to face some extreme because now the Holy Ghost is telling them the Holy Ghost spoke and said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work of the ministry. That they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And the Holy Ghost said, separate me, verse 2, Barnabas and Saul, for the work wherein two I have called them. God had called them to a specific work. And as they're going, and when they fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them out. And laying a hand still worked on them. It does work. So don't be surprised when God began to say, well, let me lay hands on you. And it because it's like a transference that God uses a medium of exchange that confirms the fact what God is doing in your midst. So when they had prayed and laid hands on them, they said, brothers, go forth. And he gets down into the synagogues and begins to preach. And he runs into an obstacle. Yes. And the obstacle is in the form of Bar Jesus or Emmaus the sorcerer. Uh -huh. He runs into a wizard. Yes. Yes, sir. He yes. runs into a manipulator yes. that had bewitched the people. Mm -hmm. But did Paul back up? No. You better believe he didn't back up. It was just another obstacle that he had faced. After all, he went through the very serious circumstances, had it. And now you get to a point in your life when you're faced with an obstacle, and it seems as if you want to back up now. It's too late to back up now. But you got to trust God and proceed. Verse 6, and he goes down to the papos, and they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus, uh -huh. which was of the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. All he wanted to do was them to preach to him. And this guy, this sorcerer, this the manipulator, this wizard said, no, we're not going to have that to happen. Hallelujah, but we're going to stop what you're doing to preach. I saw an excerpt the other day. They were protesting, doing the LBG. I can't get all the alphabet together. And the person was telling about repent and be saved. And the person that was standing around him began to throw war on him. And they begin to kiss each other in the mouth. Oh, I'm getting off the subject. And they begin to go through a whole lot of stuff. And I said, Oh my God, that's a dangerous thing to yes, be doing that now. You don't may not you may not agree with what's being done, right. but don't right. carry it to that limit. Right. Don't become blasphemous that's right. when it comes to the word of God. That's this right. man had become blasphemous to the word of God. But Elias, Elimus, the sorcerer, I'm in verse 8, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood him. Let me say that's an obstacle. That's seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. He didn't want the deputy to hear the truth. No. He said, so these guys got to go. We don't, we don't need that kind of stuff around here. And then Paul, who also is called Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Set his eyes on him. Sometimes you got to look at some folk. Yes, sir. To the point that I'm not backing up. That's right. That's right. Not one, I'm not giving up any ground. And you'd be surprised. When you do that, you might just be sitting in the signal, say, somebody got to win and somebody got to lose. And because God is on my side, yes, sir. guess what? I am not going anywhere. And said, all oh, full of subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, mm -hmm. not seeing the sun for a season, and immediately, y'all hear me say immediately. immediately. But see, so don't be afraid to pray. Now, we're not trying to beat nobody up and trying to make folk go blind, yeah. but this shows the determination of Paul. Yeah. God heard his prayer and responded immediately Amen. because he was doing that which God had ordained. God had sent through the Holy Ghost, sent them down there. And here comes this extreme circumstance. And he sent them down there to preach. And this guy said, no, you can't preach here. Right. And immediately, let me finish reading. There fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking somebody to lead him by the hand. Mm -hmm. And the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Patmos, then you read the rest of it. But this, this transpired because Paul was determined to have a game plan for his success. He had an extreme circumstance. He said, now, if I back up now, it just might just be my opportunity for God to show himself strong. And guess what God did? God showed himself strong. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greater is he that's within us. Right. So people of God, remember that when you're going through certain circumstances in your life. I always repeat that in my mind. Greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. Yeah. Not that you are so great, but the inner person, the person that's on the inside, working on the outside, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. is greater than whatever circumstance you and I may have to face. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. God is greater. And if God be for you, yes, who, y'all ever say who? who? Who can be against us? Amen. That's why we walk out with our chest up yes, and our sir. head held high. Yes, don't be lagging and walking like you don't know who you are. Right. Have that strong sense of identity. Ooh. You walk out knowing that God is on my side. Amen. Glory to God. And I tell you, it makes a difference. Yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. So keep that in mind as you face your extreme circumstance. Uh -huh. It might be a physical element in your body. Uh -huh. And I know what the doctors have said. But then we hear the whose report are you going to believe? The fact is that it is there. But the truth is that God can heal it. And I say if you can have it, God can heal it. So when you go with that type of confidence, it might be there. Hallelujah. But God can heal you. I'm a witness that he'll heal you right when you need him. I don't want to talk about it too much. I'll be here another four hours. But I know that they showed me on the scan, yes. showed me the cancerous tumors that was on my body. They said, do you see that? We need to take over your kidneys. How could you be walking around? You Normally, we got cadavers that with your condition. But you talking to us. My God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank you. We want to do a case study on how you received. How did you do this? How did you get here? And you still talking. God delivered me. They got it on record at NIH. You don't want to see it? Go up in NIH. You'll find the record with it. He had this. He don't, he don't got it no more. Can I stick my He don't got it no more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I'm saying that, Mother, if he did it for me. Yes, yes, yes. That's why I don't have no problem praying for people when they are facing sometimes the big C and other situations. Because I had, I had the big C. I had it. They showed it to me. Yes. And I said, God, you see it. Yes. saying that God will give you what it needs when you yeah. face your extreme circumstances. And if it's important to you, it's important to God. Don't be ashamed to make your request known. Don't be ashamed to ask for prayer. Sometimes we can get embarrassed because we don't want to think, make people think that I'm in need of something. We all have needs. Our needs are not all the same. It could be mental. It could be physical. But if you've got a need, make your West, no, no because if it cannot be revealed, it cannot be healed. Amen. That's right. That's right. So don't be ashamed. I want to give you that type of bonus. Yeah. Know who you are. You belong to God. There is no temptation taking you but such that is common to man. Amen. You repeat those scriptures about, but God is faithful. Oh, God. That will with the temptation or the circumstances also make a way of escape. That you might be able to bear. Yeah. He'll give you that testimony yes, of deliverance. Yeah. Somebody ought to give God a hand. Oh, yeah. I gotta stop in a little. Come on. Oh. 
But Paul gives us this to know that how he was set up uh, to become the bridge of, of grace to the Gentile nation. God says, I'm going to use you in this respect. Yes. So how is God going to use him in the respect if this sorcerer will back him down? Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. If you allow this devil to back you down now, I can't use you yeah. to be the bridge that's going to bring the Gentiles over. Yeah. I can't use yeah. you. Maybe I need somebody to speak truth to Peter yeah. when he's able to try to separate himself yeah. and when it came down to eating among the Gentiles because yeah. he didn't want to look bad right. among his Jewish brother. Right. Paul spoke right. truth to power. That's he right. said, Peter, you're to blame. That's right. Who tells Peter that? Okay. Uh, Paul. Paul. Because yes. uh -huh. he done been through this, that's not an obstacle. That's right. Peter had an issue with the fellowshipping with his non Jewish brother. Right. And he fellowshiped with them. Y'all know the story, right? I'm not talking in the same place. How are you going to change up now that all your Jewish boys are here? You are to blame. God is no respect of person. So he said that he, he said that out and all. So I'm trying to encourage you, my people of God. Don't back down when you face your extreme sir. You may be dealing with some things in your own home that it seems that it's not going to get any better. But don't give up. It may not happen now, but if you keep on trusting God yeah. and keep on standing on the promise of God, eventually God's going to bring it to pass. Yeah, that's right. And when, so don't be surprised. I'm still hearing that in the Holy Ghost this morning. Yeah. Don't surprise when it happens. Don't be surprised when it happens. Yeah. Don't be surprised. He did what? Yes, he did that. Hallelujah. Don't be surprised when God answers my prayer. Yeah. surprised when you see the things turn totally around. God, just the hallelujah. I think that our praise go right there. Don't be surprised when you see God turn it, it around. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Paul's response, and I'm trying to get through here today. Paul's response to a phony prophet, he talks about it. it Paul needed to be firm. He stepped up to the plate stood for something. You got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. We cannot afford to be passive and overly tolerant to everything. Some stuff ought to get on your righteous nerves. Ah, ah. Yes. Paul looked him yes. in the face and said he's, he wasn't talking to nobody else, talking directly to the sorcerer. Sometimes you got to say something. And we live, of course, we love everybody, but Christ commands us to love people even our enemies, but he doesn't require us to shrink from standing up for righteousness. Amen. Paul did not back down. God will back you up. So if living right got you in trouble, guess what? Yeah. Living right gonna get you out of trouble. Right. Amen. Paul's response to desertion. Let me go through this real quickly because sometimes we get deserted and sometimes folks that are in your life now just might be in your life for a season. And like we say, some people are in your life for a reason. But know, know the difference. Yes. Know the difference. Yes. Paul pressed on without any explanation. Luke simply writes in verse 13, John left them and returned to Jerusalem. In that same chapter, and now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Persia and Amphilia, and John deserted from him, them returning to Jerusalem. Y'all yes. know that story. I won't go into depth about it. Yes. But he could have very easily said, now, we just got the victory over this sorcerer. Where are you going? Wow. Yes, Was this too extreme for you that you couldn't handle it? And he had to overcome that attitude yes. of looking at John in that perspective, in that way. Yes. God called him. He didn't call John. He said, right. separate me, right. Barnabas, That's and right. Saul. That's it. John just accompanied them. That's it. So if you're on a mission for God, sometimes some folk will fall off. Yes. Amen. In the process. Yes. Yes. And sometimes if you're like a rocket booster, you're like a rocket that's exhausted. Some God is taking us to a different dimension, a different level. Yes. And if I use this, if y'all can understand what I'm saying, that there are boosters on the rocket. Yes. And it, when it reaches a certain altitude, right. guess what happened to those boosters? Right. They fall off. Right. But guess what happened to the rocket? It keeps right on going. Yeah. It keeps right on going up. And those boosters that follow, and some folk will do just that. Boost, boost, boost. And when they get to a certain season, 
So don't be discouraged. Paul experienced this. Luke says that John left him, but the story begs to more, it begs for more information. Why? Was he homesick? Was he was the journey too hard for him? Did he get afraid? What? God, John defected? Yes, John, just John Mark that defected. This thing troubled Paul. You read it in the next chapter, but he pressed on. I won't read the next chapter. I'll be here too long trying to read all of that. Y'all can read, but my point is that don't be discouraged when stuff fall off. Right, right. When things desert you, that which you depended on no longer is there. That person that you thought would be your ride or die. Sometimes they stop riding. Y'all with me? But that does not and should not deter you from your mission. You keep moving. Yes. This is reality check. Now, all the way through ministry, people leave. In every church, there will be individuals who, for whatever reason, move on to other things. They leave, but the church should press on. Yes. Regardless of the circumstances, you have to keep driving the bus. Yes. Y'all know that one like we yes. talk about that. You keep driving the bus, whatever your whatever your bus might be, you drive your bus. Yes. So whatever God has a commission you to do, press on. And I must admit it is hard to press on when you feel abandoned. Yeah, Even in relationship, yeah. in marriages, sometimes you feel abandoned. You feel like you're in that thing by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You say, Lord, how do I get out of this? Yeah. I don't have the solution. Yeah. You don't have a, I don't have a biblical answer to say I'm done. I'm walking away. It's, that cannot be irreconcilable differences. But yet and still, there are some differences that dif that makes us, that puts us in a particular uh, a precarious situation. Yeah. Yes. Because how do I deal with this? An yes. unbelieving spouse. Yes. Man or woman that don't believe you. And I'm moving and trying to move. And I feel like I got these boosters on it. I can't seem to shake yes. them. How do I move on from this? I want to encourage you today. You must press on. Yes. You must press on even though you might feel abandoned. Yes. It is easy to give in to discouragement when the devil is speaking to your mind. We've got to learn to bring our emotions in check. Y'all yes. write this down. Learn how to bring your emotions in check. Mm -hmm. Because your emotions can be very under, unreliable. unreliable. Yes, okay. Some days you feel like you're not saved. <laughs> Maybe y'all ain't felt that way. Yes. The yes. devil tells you not saved. I'm just keeping it real. I'm talking practical stuff. It's not kicking the views down, but I'm talking about because you speak to yourself more than you speak to God. Amen. So what are you saying to yourself? And the devil is speaking to you in the process. You're not saved. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. The trash talk. Oh my God. And if you listen long enough, you'll give in and succumb to his whim because your emotions has gotten out of check. Paul and Barnabas had a job to do. Tell somebody to go forward. To go forward. Paul's response to open rejection. When Paul was rejected, he did not quit. Help me say, when there's light, there are going to be bugs. When there's light, there are going to be bugs. I don't know why the bugs are attracted to light. So Jews came to Paul. They came at Paul. These are the bugs. That came at him because he was sharing the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he stayed focused. And much people believed on the Lord, but it came after his rejection and opposition. He was rejected and he faced opposition. Yes, he and he still had to be the light for the Gentile nations. Mm -hmm. So he, he it grew bugs. Yeah. You're going to draw certain opposition yeah. just because you who you say you are. Yeah. There are certain things you want to attract, attack. Mm -hmm. Can I say that? Yes. You as a believer and as a child of God, you attract, attack. Yes. You say, wow, does God allow attack me to be under this type of attack and this type of a bombardment? But God always brings us through. Yes, he does. And he does it oftentimes to prove himself strong. Yes. Um, we can go down the list. God allowed Job to go through the attack that he, but after the story, at the end of the day, that God got the glory out of Job's life because God, he says, uh, naked came I into the world and naked shall I return to my mother's womb. But the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But his testimony was blessed be the name of the Lord. Why was Paul and Barnabas able to persevere? Neither man set his affection on temporal things. 
This takes discipline. If you want to get caught in the net of disillusionment, allow yourself to get tangled in the tangibles. Get caught up on everything that's going on in and around you, that's and true. I guarantee you, that's you true. will mess up. Because yes. you're too busy trying to attach yourself to those temporary things oh, because yes. you cannot do it if you're going to press your way to a right. tomorrow. Right. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. There's a whole lot of things that can distract you, yeah. and distraction is easy, especially in this day of information bombardment. Right. You've got social media and so much information that's being, and false information, mind you, yeah. and false, what they call it, alternative facts. facts. Things that are being said, and if you're not careful, it'll run you up on a snag, and you will sink in like a rock because you become disillusioned. Yes. Don't allow these temporary things to affect you. Keep heaven in view. Yes. Keep your eyes focused on what God has for you, yes. because others' opinions will start to mean everything. What people cannot talk like this. Yes. Other people begin to. I, I'm just worried about us taking and getting to the point where we want to get the applause of everybody. Yeah. You're not going to get everybody's applause, Amen. but do it for the cause, yes. not for the applause. Amen. Right, right. Whatever God has for you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We get this addicted to other folks' opinion of us. And when you allow their responses to be the determining factor, their applause becomes essential to keep you afloat. Mm -hmm. You're going to find out that in this day, there are going to be less and less of this. Hercules, Hercules, you might not get that. You are in trouble if that's what you're looking for. Focus on the eternal, the things that last. Keep your eyes on the Lord. And when you're praised and applauded, don't get caught up. And do we need sometimes this self-affirmation? Yes, you need it. You want to feel wanted. You want to feel appreciated. But don't depend your life on it. Don't hang your coat there and let it stay there. Don't pay attention to it and don't get caught up. It could change very quickly. Yes, sir. You don't believe it? Look at Jesus' life. They were brought in, Hosanna, he that coming in the name of the Lord. One week, and before the week was out, they said, crucify. Glory. These are the same folk. The same people. In the crowd that was crying out for his life. Don't pay attention. Amen. Don't let human responses get you sidetracked. Develop a game plan for success. Don't allow contrary winds to throw you off track. God has a plan for your life. And I'm going to ask you to stand for the next few moments and to get through extreme circumstances. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Continue to do what God. Stay on track. Amen. Even though you might find extreme circumstances. Your job situation may change. Amen. Talked to a young man even yesterday. and said, I, I had everything going for me. Then all of a sudden the bottom dropped out. Didn't know what I had to regroup. I had to start over again. But starting over again is not bad when you got Jesus to start. Amen. 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 You got the Lord. If you got Jesus on your side, you got enough to start over again. I don't care. It could be a loss of the house. Could be a loss of income. Could be a loss of everything. But the spouse or the person, the significant other that you thought that was going to be there for you, all of a sudden find somebody else. Amen. So what are you going to do? Amen. You're facing an extreme circumstance. Yes. Don't allow your emotions to overtake you. Say, well, I might as well go on and backslide and do what I got to do. But stay there and keep your trust in God. So we want you to keep that in mind. I want you to bow your heads. And I'm praying for you and your families. And hallelujah. And I know this wasn't a shouting type of message, but that's what the Lord gave me. I'm trying to help folks make it to the end. But we we doing a lot. And we run. Who, you did run well, but who hindered you? Oh, make that statement. They were running. They were doing good. The Galatians were doing great. But all of a sudden, false teachers arose yes. and caused them to second guess mm -hmm. and to overthink some things. And they said, we might as well go back mm -hmm. to Judas and false and all. There's something better. Yes. God has his that's better than the angels. Y'all read Hebrew. Yes, something is. better than yes. those prophets. Yes, I, we is. got something better. Well, yes. Don't give up now. Yes. God got better for you. Yes. Tell yourself, God got better for me. God got better for me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you now for these people. I thank you for the opportunity to share with them and how they can have a game plan for facing extreme circumstances. And God, many of the circumstances, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but you give us deliverance over them all. 
And God knows about those, these fathers, these husbands, these yeah. wives that are facing extreme circumstances, yeah, sure. even in their personal space, in their households, and in their on their job, dealing with adversarial forces and people that just seem like they're just angry and just mad all of the time. God, I'm praying now that you would give them, hallelujah, a peace. Yeah. Yeah. That path of all understanding that they would not be affected by all of the external yeah. circumstances yeah. that are pressured, they are pressured with. Yeah. But God, you give them to go through. Hallelujah. Yeah. You give them the strength that they need. Yeah. Let the anointing of the Holy yeah. Ghost rest upon them. In the name of Jesus, help us to realize who we really are in Christ Jesus. Don't let us get off of the mission. Don't let us get off of the track. Don't let us lose focus on what you have for us because what you have for us is much better. Glory to God. And we appreciate We thank you now. We thank you now, Lord. We thank you right now for what you're doing and that what you are going to do. Bless each and every household that's represented here. Lord, those persons that are not saved, we're praying that you would save and that you would deliver before it's everlasting to me. Don't let us get caught up, Lord. In our emotion, but God help us to turn them over unto you. You know what's best for us, and we'll give you the praise, and we give you the glory, and we'll give you all the honor. Do what need be done in their life. God, be there in the midst of their extreme circumstance. Give them a sense of direction and guidance, oh God. Show them which way to go. Tell them what they got to do and how they got to do it, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And we'll give you the praise, we'll give you the glory. Yeah. This we do decree and declare today that yeah. it is so, and so it is. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, everybody, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Come and see the presence of the Lord. I thank God for the opportunity to share with you this morning because it was time that in my life that I wanted to even quit. Now, you don't hear people say that very often. Preachers want to quit too. Matter of fact, I think they are quit and want to quit even more now. <laughs> that they have experienced some things and dealing with what they have to deal with. But then you got to read, got to understand why you preach. And you see the fact that you got others that are depending on you and depending on you to stand fast and to stand firm and not to give up. And be the example and not what to firm Irma. That's the excuse. So we don't want to give anybody excuse. Come on, let's give God a praise.